Hello, and welcome to Kyber Shards, a 5th edition actual play show set in the Eberron campaign world. It's Friday, and we've got a Kyber Shards answer focused around the character of Shade. So we are joined by Casey. Um, and Vash. Yes, you can see two little critters. I really like in episodes where, because I've got the two, slightly two different angles on that room with you and R.A., where I get Vash come in, and then it's like he it's like he turns a corner on my screen because the <laughs> angles are slightly different. Uh, but uh, it's nice to know what they're doing. If I can like right. take an RA's camera <laughs> in, like, if I can't got a quite rear view see mirror. them in yeah. mine, right. <laughs> they're always up to no good. One hundred percent of the time, of course. The joy of pets. They do bring a lot of joy. Uh, so we had um, a few questions about Shade, and a lot of them um, discussed Shade's connection to the Feywild. And so I wanted to jump back to the conversation with Ari, where Ari is revealing the nature of his curse. Uh, because there was a kind of an interesting moment that you we talked about off screen after the recording. Mm -hmm. And I thought it would be kind of cool to talk about because I'm extremely certain that this happens to players all the time. Um, you as... I hope so. <laughs> I hope it's not just me. <laughs> you as Shade said, uh, oh, the Force Queen's always good. She gave me my mark. And everyone in the room kind of went... And then you, I think mainly as Casey felt the 100%. need to backtrack as as the player who at least i feel like i know the least like i understand that colin has played the least but colin is a good improviser he just is very good at putting on a character at going with the story and um i enjoy it and i think i've gotten a lot better at it but definitely that moment of Oh, the Forest Queen gave it to me. And then the reactions that I could see on screen were bigger than I had anticipated that getting. And so I absolutely panicked. I have broken the narrative. <laughs> I have done something that... <laughs> you have not broken the narrative. <laughs> Is it? <laughs> well, my panic moments yeah. aren't always logical. <laughs> I did. I, I really thought like I, I went too far. I made a decision that was not within my ability to decide or a decision that doesn't only impact me and my character. Um, and so that moment where I then, as Casey, explain, well, a belief is something you think to be true, was absolutely my me backpedaling mm -hmm. on that revelation or thought um, and immediately regretted it. Immediately regretted it. It would have been fun to just figure out A, we know Shade believes that. Right. So is, is her belief true or false? And that would have been a fun adventure to go into. And so just explaining that felt it felt like it was very clear, clearly me mm -hmm. going back and saying, I'm sorry, I messed up. I I will try to fix it now <laughs> and then I can put a bandaid on it. Um, yeah. But yes, it was definitely a panic moment. <laughs> no, I, I totally get that. I mean, you play in a, a setting, you've got people around you who, who know the setting well. Um, and. Oh, no. What are they reacting to? Like the faces? Yeah, I, I totally. And, and watching the episode, having having had that conversation with you, watching the episode and watching our faces, our faces are very big. You're not wrong. Our reactions were very strong. My reaction was big because what was happening in my head was, oh, oh, this is going to be fun. What are they going to do? Because I I knew that that's what Shade associated her mark with, um, mm -hmm. and I. You know, she had talked about or has talked about the, you know, the forest and the mark and, she, and, and it's the, 
her mark is like nature protecting her and that kind of thing. But this was the most concrete statement she had ever made. Uh, and so I was, um, but I think it's also like, I know it was Casey, but I think it worked really well in character because here shade has in a lot of ways, I think in, in that moment, it's kind of opening up. It's a, this is, this is something that I fundamentally believe about, about my life. And then all of my friends looked at me like I sprouted a second head. That's true. It it does play into her fears of otherness um, very, very well. And we talked off camera about that moment. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of the players had said they had reacted in character, that that was not them reacting to that revelation. It was definitely their characters reacting to shade so clearly and explicitly um <laughs> sorry your cat is now <laughs> approaching me <laughs> as yes um and so it, i i should have trusted the crew i was with enough um because i've played with you a lot i've obviously played with ra a lot um and it was it was definitely that that panic of this is this is not just my story and it's not just our story. I mean, the story is part of the audiences too. Yeah. And we have an audience who some are new to it, but are some are really well versed in this world. They, they know it much better than I do. And I don't want to ruin their story and this experience for them by, um, by breaking the rules of the world. Mm -hmm. And I get that that's a little unfair to them too. Our, our viewers are so very kind and generous and I know that there would not be riots galore against <laughs> shade. But in that, in that millisecond, I felt that pressure. It would be so hard to turn the fans against shade. <laughs> um, yeah, no, but uh, I hope so. Yeah, but I get that. Uh, Maybe her power hungriness will drive it though. <laughs> Um, the good news, I mean, the, the positive thing about this is, you know, nothing that was said really came down definitively on, on either side. So, and, you know, you, you're saying you, you've, the way you have been, been talking has been, um, I said this and it would, it would have been a fun adventure to go on. It would have been a fun thing to explore. We still get to, we're going to keep playing. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's very true. So. Very true. The... The question still stands, yeah. the whether or not her her understanding of her mark is accurate is still to be played out. Yeah. Which is what I love. I love in D&D &D when you and your character don't know something and you get to explore it, decide it, move forward on those. Um, the whole storytelling aspect of it is a huge pull for mm -hmm. me. Yeah. Well, and I love, I love moments like that in, in my games because most of the people that I play regularly with, like aside from Eric, most of the people I play regularly with, uh, I realized recently I taught to play D and D. Um, you have molded like, us. Like I, <laughs> um, I, like you and RA, I, I, I taught to play D and D and I taught Colin to play D and D. Um, and even in our, in our home games, some of the others, uh, like, uh, my wife Kelly plays with us in our home game and I taught her to play D and D. And so, um, it's really fun because as I've gotten to play with you and seeing how, how different your willingness to like grab a piece of the story, um, is compared to when we started playing, uh, Oh boy. And it's it's such a and, and it's such a hard dynamic to work out. Of, of, will the DM let me just make this big big declaration about the something fundamental to the to the campaign? Um that's um It has been a big shift. Yeah. I definitely started with the, you know, here, here's your two options. Like what what do you mean what can I do and um <laughs> I have grown a lot in my confidence and understanding of how to play. Sure. Um, but it's interesting from, from my perspective, you have 
taught me how to play. You have been the DM most of the games that I've played and the ones that have it is mostly been RA. Yeah. And so when people in the comments talk about what an incredible DM you are, it's so interesting because I have 100% taken that at, for advantage, <laughs> taking that, taking that for granted. I can say phrases, but absolutely going back and realizing, oh, that was really intelligent how he set that up or what watching the KSAs as one of your players and how intentional you are about, well, I didn't want to give them this control, but I knew I could allow them this. Um, I definitely don't realize that in game and I don't realize the intention or thoughtfulness of how much you are controlling the balance of our power within the world. Um, and you do it really well, but I'm absolutely spoiled by having started with you. Well, I, I'm thank you. Um, but the, you know, we get the comments about how, how all this is wonderfully planned out, but so much of this exists because you guys picked stuff. I mean, you, you literally decided who Tommel was. Um, uh, R.A. named Tommel. Uh, you and Colin are the ones who decided that Solarka would be an important part of the campaign. Um, like, so much of the the interaction uh in the in the world is entire has entirely been determined by by player by player choice and by uh character choice uh and that's that's what i love on this end of it is not really knowing where this is going like i have a good idea of what some of the bad guys are trying to do but I really have no clue where this is going because it's. I, I like it being character driven. Um, I don't. I don't want to trap no you guys. No book throwing is just for dramatic effect. Right. I don't want to trap you guys in a choose your own adventure uh, book. Um, so it's well, and it's been interesting how cohesive it's come together. Mm. You know, with with Ari's background as finding out his involvement being with the Feywild. Um, and how, obviously, um, Shades um, has something to do with it. And so it's been so interesting how cohesive the stories have been coming mm -hmm. together, too. Um, I find that, that fascinating. Yeah. And, and so, much of it, so much of that, especially just through pure coincidence, because we didn't, the, right. the character background stuff, we didn't discuss as a group. Like, we, got, we discussed... We discussed what everyone's mark was going to do because we wanted kind of the superhero feel, so we didn't want redundancy there. But other than that, guys, it was all kind of done independently, which is cool that it... Right. As as became clear with Ari's, as players, we don't know each other's secrets. Yeah. We don't know any of that information and are, are finding out about it in real time. Yeah. It's fun. Um... Let's jump into some questions because we have some questions about some of these things. Uh, so, um, well, uh, Laura asks, what does Shade think about her and Ari both having a connection to the Feywild? Uh, has she considered that she might go there to solve her dream problem? I'm interested whether Shade considers her dreams a problem also. Um, and... Is that a thing that she would be really excited to do, or going would be a, a reluctant thing? Well, to work backwards, she would be so excited. Just because her core belief as the Forest Queen being the one who has protected her for so long, it's, it's people that have failed her. It definitely is not um, the Forest Queen. And so just being able to go into her realm would be, um, you know, a, a possibility of meeting her, um, a possibility of, of interacting in her world would just absolutely excite Shade. Mm -hmm. I think she would be cautious about Ari's, um, what I imagine to be hesitance. I, I can't imagine that Ari is like, yes, adventure time, forest and Feywild. <laughs> right, yeah. Yeah. And so she would have to to 
go in with those expectations that he's not going to be quite as excited as she is. Um, I think she's fascinated that he's connected to the Feywild too. Part of her hesitance so far in pursuing those dreams because I I think she knows that she has to pursue the the dreams into the Feywild. I think she's aware that that's where they seem to be. Um, the images seem to be coming from. Um, am I wording that yeah. well? The images in the dreams she thinks are locations in the Feywild. Yeah. And so to pursue that, she'll have to go there. Um, she's been hesitant to do that up until this point because of everybody else has had their own thing going on. And she was too insecure to try to distract from those things with her own sort of side quest. Mm -hmm. Um, she wants to be invaluable to the other characters so that they don't leave her. And you do that by participating in their things. You don't invite them to one of your things. Um, I understand as a human being that that's not right. how that works. But <laughs> <laughs> Shade's uh, social intelligence is, is not super high. And so now that one of her friends also has something to do with Faith Wild, um, it's, a, it's a great segue into maybe we should go. Um, yeah. So she's kind of excited that <laughs> it would be for multiple people of the group. Excuse me as I remove a cat. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I don't know who you're apologizing to because I think it's well established that our, our viewers are very pleased with animal cameos. <laughs> They are cute. They are distracting. <laughs> um, and I hope she didn't unplug anything super necessary. I, I mean, I can still see and hear you, so. Awesome. Uh, question from uh, Eric. Do you envision Shade growing into a leadership and or mentor role for the people at the school? Uh, and secondly, has Shade ever talked to Cal about visiting Thalanus? This Cal is the cat, is the one we're referring to. I realize that I've <laughs> ruined so many things, but. <laughs> we should just number them. <laughs> Obviously, he's Cal 1. Of course, yes. Cal Prime. Yeah. <laughs> um, she has, knowing that Cal is a fey panther, um, knowing that these images are, are snapshots of the fight. Feywild, she would have asked him about it. She doesn't want to until she's ready to go. I don't think she's ready to be like, take me. Um, until that's a an actionable thing that they can then do. Mm -hmm. But I imagine she tells Cal everything and he, you know, very cat personality lounges around listening or napping but shade does not have a preference <laughs> he's a because he's sounding bored regardless exactly uh, and um and then sorry. shade growing into a, a mentor or a leader at the school do you see that as a would shade want that like is that something shade would be comfortable with i think right now she wants it as a as a way to establish authority. Mm -hmm. um, she's very uh, determined to gain some sort of power um, to, to prove to herself that um, she has power and um, um, autonomy in her own life. And so I think that she sees that as an end to an, a means to an end. I, I, can have power, I can show my purpose in this very um, visible way, right? If you are leading people and teaching people, that's, that, that is something that you can display. Um, I don't think she would be great at it. <laughs> I think 
it would be fun to play. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that just player wise in charge of this character, I think it would be really beautiful if she, if she grew through this, if it got to a point where she realized the the trauma that she experienced and that that could develop empathy not not fear and isolation um but i i think it would be really beautiful if if she could see the use that um to guard others and protect others i don't know that if that's where she's headed but as a player th that's the directions that i tend to like to go cool that does sound very nice. Um, similar question from Richard. When Kyber Shard started, Shade was still very uncertain about her abilities. Uh, now that her powers are growing, does she feel more confident about her control over them? Uh, and does she think that she can help teach the new students how to control their powers? I do not think she feels like she could teach the new students how to control her powers. Mm -hmm. um, I think she views them as still very intuitive and tied to survival and emotions. Um, and I'm not sure I've done, I've communicated that well in play, mm -hmm. but I have tried to use her mark abilities when she is really upset or scared, even though she has gained control more control of them and in the last episode she uses the um um uh lightning lure blade of kyber oh, blade. yes well and then blade of kyber and it's right after the vampire bites pog mm -hmm. and she's just scared and frustrated and mad and so i i don't think i played that well but all of those things were going in my head yeah. <laughs> that that emotional response was channeling into that lightning energy from the mark into the blade and so i don't i don't know that she has control she definitely i guess she does she has better control she is not oopsing like and making that happen right. but they are very much still tied to her uh, emotional state and their her emotional reactions cool so I don't think she would teach it well. But... Um, Oof, that was a poor ending. Oh. <laughs> uh, Richard. What a terrible transition. Richard also asks, what are Shade's thoughts on Arya's re revelation? Is she worried that she'll forget him in a critical moment? Is she thinking of ways they could use their curse to their advantage? Yes and yes. This her fears of abandonment what if she did that to somebody else mm. like that would be awful that the thing you're so afraid of is the thing that you end up um putting somebody else through um i think she's very scared that she could cause him pain in that way interesting okay she's familiar with that and she and he was in the first first group he was the first one that said you know no we'll we'll stick together yeah. and and this is what that looks like he's the one that that reached out to her and and provided that connection and community um when we initially ran away and so i think she is um i think I think that is going to end up weighing heavy on her mm -hmm. um, in how to prevent that. I think she definitely sees the advantages <laughs> <laughs> being able to be forgotten. Man, the amount of stealing and providing <laughs> for the group, that's great. Great power. Ari's going to take the lead on all of our on all of y'all's theft from now on. Right. <laughs> Just rethinking some of the past plans. Right. <laughs> Maybe could have had different outcomes. Um, and then lastly, uh, is Shade worried that Pog is going to become a vampire? 
question for you. How much, how common are vampires in Eberron? Would Shade have been exposed to um, hmm. the possibility of them existing and how they function? Their existence? Absolutely. Uh, and their basic nature, yes. Shade definitely doesn't know, Shade definitely would not have met a vampire and known she met a, a vampire because vampires are very averse okay. to people knowing that they're vampires. Um, right, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, maybe, uh, and again, not living, not spending much of her life in a city, um, It it's pretty probable that Shade probably doesn't even have, like, the kind of exposure to urban legends about vampires that, say, Ari and Esri uh, would from being more more cosmopolitan characters. Uh, so Shade definitely knows the concept of a vampire. Um, but I, I wonder what Shade, I wonder what Shade's view would be on the whole idea of undeath um, being so naturalistic in her, in her worldview. It's it's interesting that you make that point about her not growing up in an urban setting and so therefore being limited to the, the tales that she's aware of. I, I'm not sure that I had thought about that aspect of her yet, mm. about there's just universal myths that she just wouldn't be aware of. And then what are her myths? Right. What are the things that she made up existing in this forest with these creatures? Um, ooh, made up urban myths. Well, what, are the things about that, that yet? what are the things that Shay just assumes everybody knows about? Right. <laughs> That's a. Everybody knows you always have to. Now I can't even make up something <laughs> on the spot. I am not a naturalist myself. Just walk by oak trees on the left side. Hmm. Right. Duh. That's a that's a well that will be interesting to um to explore. Yes it is. Um thank you for those questions that sparked right, that. Yeah. <laughs> uh so that being the case, if if Shade knows the basics of vampires, do you think she's in, is worried that Pog will will turn or is is this just a monster bit Pog? I don't think she's worried. I think that she would have paid particular attention to how other people reacted mm -hmm. when they saw. And they were not, they did not react in a way that, that made her continue concern that she had in that moment. Okay. Um, in that moment, absolutely. I no idea how this works. Um, but once he was seen to then their reactions did not indicate emergency. So I I don't think she's worried about that. Yeah. That makes sense. Well, and I mean, uh, that seems reasonable considering particularly that you have, um, you have Taurus there and you've got a, you've got a cleric who's not panicking in the moment. So. Right. Exactly. <laughs> if anybody's going to panic, it's going to be this person. So that makes sense. Yeah. Shade's been bit by animals. It's fine. Let's put a little, let's wash it real well. It'll be fine. Pack it with leaves. Come right. on. Yeah, of course. Everyone knows that. Yes. <laughs> that's going to be fun. Um, all right. Well, that's all of our questions for this week. Thank you so much to our viewers for submitting those. Uh, if you'd like to submit questions, you can find a link to our Discord where we take the questions from down in the description. You can also find, uh, you can also put questions in the comments on this video or in our other episodes. I always go back and check the last couple of videos. Uh, also, in yet another random pitch an NPC to me thing, uh, Thor is hiring teachers for Grimalkin Academy. Pitch me some weirdo who comes to work at a school for, uh, for aberrants. Awesome. Let us know who the uh, who the professors are at the 
at the Grimalkin Academy for Aberrant Marked Youngsters, <laughs> or whatever it's called. <laughs> it's got to be a better. I need to. We need to come up with a term for, so that I can stop saying aberrant marked. Um, because I did think. Um, speaking of getting professors, I think that the back to the mentor mm -hmm. question. I think that shade would be the Hagrid equivalent. Oh, okay. Nice. Yeah, that makes sense. I could see her doing mm -hmm. that. Uh, yeah, that would be fun. Um, all of our other social media is also down in the description below. New episodes of Kyber Shards drop on Monday and new KSAs every Friday. Thank you so much for watching. This has been Kyber Shards, and thanks for rolling with us.